Thank you all for being here. Help me understand who you are. I guess before we start, because I don't have a clock, is there someone who would be willing to keep time for me? To let me know when it's 10 till. Because we're supposed to break at 10 till, and I don't want to run y'all super late. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I'm a teacher here at the Acting School of Business, and I also teach inside companies kind of around the, the city. I am a, a guy who's been CEO of several startups. I have never been a mentor for Explorer Austin. So some of you are already way ahead. <laughs> That's not true. What's that? That's not true. <laughs> Help me get to know who you are. How many of you are currently mentoring explorers? One, two, three, four. How many of you are not mentoring explorers yet? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. How many of you lead people professionally? That is, in your professional role, you lead people. One, two, three, four, five. And how many don't lead people professionally yet? One, two, three, four. Great. A lot of the explorers come from Hispanic culture. So it's important that as you be a mentor, that you're culturally sensitive to Hispanic culture. How many of you are familiar with one or more Hispanic cultures? Six. And who are not? One, two, three. Okay. And one question mark, obviously. Okay. Years ago, there was a guy named Daniel Goldman. Daniel Goldman is a very famous writer when it comes to leadership. And he wrote a paper called Leadership That Gets Results. And we've got, oh, it looks like they handed them out to you. Okay. Goldman hypothesizes that there are six styles of leadership. And you can read the paper or you can just take a, a photo of this right here because this kind of synopsizes the whole paper. The first style is coercive. A way to typify coercive is do what I say. This is a very command and control kind of leadership style. The archetype of that would be an army drill sergeant in boot camp. You all, you've all seen movies of what that's like. There's the authoritative style which is can be typified by come with me. This is someone who sets big, long strategic goals and then leaves people a lot of freedom in determining how they go to pursue those goals. That makes sense to everybody. The next one is affiliated. That can be typified by people come first. This is like, why don't we all get along? Let's all be friends. Let's make sure that when we meet that everything is nice. The next type is democratic, which is let's vote. That is, we're going to take a vote, whatever, whatever is the majority, that's what we're going to go do. Next one is pace setting, which can be typified by be like me. This is somebody who says, I'm going to go out and be the very best in the entire company. It's something that's very important. And then what I want you all to do is be just like me. They'll work extra hard, they'll work extra long, they'll usually be exceptional at some facet of the company, and they'll try to get everybody to be like that. And then the last one is coaching. And coach, just like a, a coach in sports, is someone who says, change this to get better at what you're doing. So that what they're looking is always looking at how do you mold and improve the, the people that you're working with to make them better. Now, if you look at those six different leadership styles, which one is the best to use for mentoring explorers? Okay, but if you had to pick just one, which one would you pick? Coaching. Coaching, why? Well, I feel like anybody, everybody has a little innate, well, most people have an innate feeling of trying to be better or get to somewhere better than where they are. Who disagrees? I disagree. Which one would you use? I think affiliative. Why? Um, because uh, we are, we're trying to influence um, and, and that requires uh, understanding of trust and caring. And I think that is really important in this context. Trust and care. 
people have an innate desire to, to improve or to change. What's at the root here? What's at the root of your explorers that would give you an idea of which leadership style to pick? Why did they sign up to be explorers? They, they want some sort of transformational experience. I don't think they would probably put it that way, but um, something that challenges them and that it's fun. And, um, yeah. Transformational experience. I'm not sure I know what that means, but maybe we can kind of dig deeper. I would, I, if I would, oh, another way I would put it is change to get better. Basically. Change to get better. That would be the, the okay. way I would put that. What is missing in their lives? that would cause them to want to go be an explorer? Guidance. Guidance. Tell me, what's that mean? So, so I think it's sort of really a setting of something to focus on to try to replicate or an example. To an example. Mm -hmm. uh, for something to focus on and then to be a, like just a guiding story. But if someone might have actually said that, might have still have my one. So they need a role model. Right. Why does, an ex why does someone become an explorer? Access to experiences. Experiences. Mm -hmm. why, why would they care? Why would they want more experiences? I think it would be fun. Fun. They need more fun in their lives than they have. OK. Here's the reason that I challenge you with the question is for you to know how best to mentor these folks, you've got to get to why are they there in the first place. Why did they sign up? Now, I want to be careful. Just because they signed up to have fun doesn't necessarily mean that the best that you can do as a mentor for them is to make it always fun. Yeah. At the end of the day, what, what are your concerns? Why did you sign up to be a mentor? To give to give guidance. To give guidance, why? <clears throat> um, because we think that we could. I, I hesitate to make a difference. That we think that we could. That one in that stage of life could use guidance and all for for you know for the better. Yeah, make no mistake about it. Every single one of you will make a big difference in these people's lives. Let me say that again, because tense, the word, the, the verb tense that I used is powerfully important. Every single one of you will make a big difference in these explorers' lives. Now, you get to choose whether that difference is positive or negative. But make no mistake about it. These are people who are entered as explorers at a pivotal point in their lives. They're coming at a time when they're walking on the razor's edge. They can go left or right, but they are walking the razor's edge. And you get to make a big difference in which direction they go with their lives. Is that fair? So that could be guidance. That could be being a role model. That could be giving them a transform, transformational experience. Though they may be seeking fun, they want that fun has to have a point. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. It has to be, I'm getting something out of that fun experience, above and beyond just fun. At the same time, you take on a huge burden by deciding, oh, I'm going to make a difference in these people's lives. That's a huge burden. It's a huge responsibility. That's why Explore Austin is so careful with vetting people, why they have I forgot the number you told me, but 65 people who apply and six that get accepted. So when there's a 10 to 1 or 11 to 1 ratio between applicants and, and mentors, Explore Austin is being very, very careful about that because you can make such a, you will make such a big difference, but you can also make it the wrong way. Is that fair? How you mentor and the leadership style that you use is vitally important to whether these folks succeed or fail with having a positive experience out of Explorer Austin. So it's important that you choose. If you were to choose the coaching style, how could that go wrong? 
Well, you feel like you, well, in my experience, because I've always tried to uh, be better than how I was raised or where I came from, and so you have some sort of feeling of alienation from your past or your family or friends or um, those types of relationships. So sometimes you have to let those go. Uh, so then that can be challenging in itself to, to grow and further yourself. How could it go wrong with a feeling like that? There's no direction. No direction? And yet they came looking for guidance. They came looking for a role model. And what they got was a club. <laughs> well, I mean, that's kind of the affiliating style. We're all in this together. Mm -hmm. we're, we're in a club. Okay, which is the worst style to use? Versus why? They probably get that at home. They yeah, probably cool. get a lot of that. They probably don't learn from it. Well, it doesn't depend on the situation, though. Because, of course, it could be, in some instances, the way you need to do it. Aha. Uh -huh. So, so course, it might be just the right style to use. In some instances, I'm not saying overall, but say you're from a safety standpoint. From a safety standpoint, safety. say something's going on and it's like it's a crisis, and it's like, okay, it's with self ideas anymore. You need to do what I'm telling you to do, because if not, there's going to be trouble, like the issues in terms of accidents, deaths, or whatever. Yeah. Right? So, so from that so standpoint, you have to adapt your style of leadership to the situation. So let's use a specific example to help make this clear. Where is there an example of where the coercive style is the right style to use with these explorers? Climbing. Climbing. Tell me more. Well, you have to tie the knot right and belay correctly. Um, so. I give an example and I say, you have to do it this way or I'm not going to let you belay your partner. And Fair enough. So what are the consequences if I'm, if I'm belaying you mm -hmm. and instead I'm busy chatting with Caroline over here instead of paying somebody attention to her, somebody could die. So is that a time where what you want to do is be very coercive? Look, pay attention to who's up on the wall or mm -hmm. let go of the rope. Mm -hmm. Give it to somebody else. You're fired as a belay if you don't pay attention to who's up on the wall. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Yep. If you're going to use the coercive style, how do you do that right? If they've already getting a whole lot of it, how do you make sure that you're using the coercive style so that it ends up being effective, that they feel cared for, that they feel known? Your tone? Tone. So. Mm. Not saying oh you're fired from blank job. You know, instead of your tone still coming at them in not such a demeaning manner. So maybe say, okay, hey, let's take a break for a second so you can practice more, let me take over. Um, because you're not doing it correctly, let's have you stop. Let go of the robot taking it away from you. Yeah, that's. Does makes, that work? That makes me feel bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's going to create. That creates a gap mm -hmm. between you and your explorer that may never heal. Mm -hmm. Let go of the rope. Give it to me, because this is this person could get hurt. I don't want them to get killed. Just like I don't want you to get hurt. Mm -hmm. I'll take the rope. Do you understand my intentions? Mm -hmm. If you understand my intentions, do you feel cared for? Yep. So it takes longer to speak when you're being coercive because you have to be clear about what are your motives, what are your intentions behind why you're being coercive. But if you do it in such a fashion where it's very clear that Scott, I'm taking care of you, I'm not going to let anybody hurt you ever, just as I'm not going to let anybody hurt him because he's blind. Now you feel cared for because I'm taking care of him. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Carolyn, you brought up a question that's a really good question. Is that can you use more than one leadership style? You're nodding yes. Can you? 
Are we talking about through the course of a relationship or simultaneously? In the course of a relationship. Oh yeah, because I think it would be just that, right? So let's say that my leadership style is coaching, but we're rock climbing and I have to be, I have to get to a point where everyone's going to be safe and be very clear about what I need to do. Then I would use coercive, but then I would probably then swing back to coaching as just a communication style. What's wrong with using more than one leadership style? People can see it's inconsistent. Inconsistency. Not yeah. Happy. And what do these people need in their lives right now, Scott? Consistency. They need consistency. They need to feel like they're going to lie on them. Yes, Kevin. Where does that inconsistency come from if, say, you're in a major situation, and one time I'm going to be coercive, and then next time I'm just going to be like, hey, look at how I'm doing it. So you're being consistent in a civil situation. If you're able to remain consistent when the situations are going to be similar, although you are changing the way you are in general, like that would still work. Wouldn't it? So consistency in the circumstances, mm -hmm. but inconsistent as far as the whole thing put together, that you, you're using one or two or three of these. Will that work? I think so. Say if you're playing, you're going to play a game. I say, okay, let's, let, like, if I tell you what, if I use cards, say we're going to play a game, I say, okay, we're going to go play croquet. I know we're going to play croquet. Well, like, that's not going to work. But if you say, okay, let's vote, who wants to play ultimate? Okay, then you know that's what it is. So you have to change how how you're going to be, how you're going to present yourself, and how you're going to act with these with this youth when you're in different situations. And that's why you have to be the judge of the situation and know what you have to use. Yeah. See, here's where I struggle, Roy. Is that is it Roy or Ray? Roy. It's Roy. Yeah. Okay. Play Roy. Play here's play. where I struggle. Is that circumstances are always fuzzy. Mm -hmm. There's always gray. There's never simple black and white. That is, if I'm changing different leadership styles based on circumstances, if I'm an explorer, how do I know which egg slot, you know, which slot in the egg crate this particular event falls in? Now I've got a guess because you might be using three or four, five or six different leadership styles. How do I know? Yeah, I think the kids are pretty perceptive too. And so if you're doing something or trying a leadership style that maybe you're not comfortable with, it may seem disingenuous and maybe hard to make a connection that way. And so I think um, they can kind of perceive what your style is and what you might be you know, forcing a little bit. And I think when they feel that you're forcing it, um, it's harder to make a connection that way. Yeah, it, you're right, is they've got gigantic successful BS detectors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if they see that you're faking it until you make it, their BS detector lights up bright red, mm -hmm. right? And then they're out. It's like, oh, he's, he's not being honest with you. And they need trust. They need to trust you. They need to feel consistency. Here's a suggestion that I have. What if they always knew what were your intentions? What you care about? that they're known and that you care about them. And that regardless of the leadership style that you're using, the intention behind that leadership style is always about them and never about you. That is, whenever you lead, the actions that you take are never for your best benefit. They're always for their best benefit. Now, you may judge wrong. They may disagree, but they will never, ever doubt your intentions. Does that make sense, right? Yes, sir. Now, if they always <clears throat> know what your intentions are, and they can see the consistency, and if they have any doubts, that they can come to you and say, why are you doing that? Why did you choose that? Why are you making me do this? And that your response is always consistent back to that word that I'm taking care of you. Now they'll start to be a lot more lenient, a lot more accepting of your changing your leadership style based on the circumstance. Is that fair? 
This begs the question is, do great leaders there in the world, think about great leaders, people who have been fantastic leaders, people who you use as, as a role model for yourself and leading people, do they use one style or two styles or do they use a model? Who's your who's your role model? One's by my father. Your father. Mm -hmm. Great example. Has he ever been coercive with you? Of course. Authoritative? Yeah. Affiliated? Definitely. Democratic, I think, is next. Yeah. Pace setting? Yeah. Has he ever said, watch this? Here's how you do it. Now you try. Yeah. That would be pace setting. Coaching? Definitely. Okay. Here's the reason I bring it up. It's in that paper that you have by Daniel Goldman. He says that good people who are really good at leading use all of them. They have to be adept at using all six leadership styles. So here's the point. None of these are negative. None of these are positive. There's no judgment, good or bad, because they are circumstantial. But what's imperative for you to build trust with your explorers is that they're clear about what's the foundation that's underneath. That's why did you show up? Why are you here? And it's not about you. That you showed up because it's all about them. Is that okay, Sam? Okay. The big problem then is if you're going to use more than one style, how do you keep your explorers in tow with you? That is, how do they keep them from feeling like they're being whipsawed. Does that make sense, what I'm asking? Yeah, they're, they're, they feel like your friend one minute, and then they feel like you know, you're, you're, they're being told what to do another minute, you know. Yeah, hey, look, let's all go climb this wall. Gee, isn't this fun? This would be a great activity for, all, for us all to do this together. No, stop that. Don't do that. That could be hurtful. How do you bring them along with you? so that they stay with you each step along the way as you change leadership styles. It's so like you said, to uh, communicate the intentions, um, maybe even communicate um, itinerary and what's expected out of each event. Um, and, you know, we're, we're gonna walk this way so we can, you know, just, talk and get along and have fun, but once we get to the rock, uh, we need to pay close attention and listen to every word that the leadership says. Uh, so what I hear you say, Jared, is that right? Yes, sir. I'm very old and blind, so it's hard for me to see. Jared, uh, what I hear you say is set expectations up front. Make it clear for them. This is what we're gonna do. This is what we do. This is what we just did. So that they have the context for the whole experience they're about to get. If they have a context behind the experience, will that make it more fun? Mm -hmm. Okay. Does it make it more fun, though, if you eliminate surprises? surprises. <laughs> no. Because what kind of surprises? What kind of surprises. Okay, tell me a surprise that would be, <sighs> that's fantastic. I can't believe Kevin is there. Yeah, it is Kevin, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I can't believe Kevin did that for us. What a great so time. Nice. So, for instance, something, something where, <laughs> say, say you're going to go up to the top of the mountain and there's a great view. Like, if I don't tell them there's a great view, and then that's a surprise. We get to the top. Now, this is a surprise, you get a great view. Now, that's something which is going to be welcome. But if you give a surprise which has a negative impact on somebody, like, that's never, that's never appreciated. So, you're driving, <clears throat> if I'm driving home, getting to Nathan, that's a surprise. It's not welcome. It's not a welcome surprise. If I go home and I see a friend is waiting for the waiting there, and that's a surprise that will be welcome. So it's really kind of having to decide how much elements you want to keep out of and what people need preparation for. <laughs> how many of you? This is a closed door. We're going to keep this very very confidential. But how many of you come from a home where there was? Uh, at least a lot of anger and strife in home, maybe even abuse. I do. If you came from a home like that, was control, when you when you were a preteen, was control of the situation important to you? Yeah, it was for me. I had to be in control. 
because I felt like my life was always out of control. I never knew when the surprises were coming. Even positive surprises can be, can push me off set and make my world better. Does that make sense? So, you know, a part of this about surprises is to know your explorers really well. Know them really well. Know that even if there are surprises, you're taking care of them. That you'll be there for them. That you know them. Is that fair? So Daniel Goleman suggests that you have to be able to use all the leadership styles and use them for the right circumstances. So let's take some examples. What's a circumstance that could come up in something that you're doing with your explorers that could be really hard for your explorers? This could be a tough time, a pivotal time for them. Let's take some examples. When they're homesick? Homesick. Zipline. Zipline. Something very physically challenging. If they hurt themselves or something like that, they get hurt. And I want to clarify here. More kinds of hurts than that. But for a preteen, can we kind of assume that those are the three basic kinds of hurt mm -hmm. that they're most concerned with? Mm -hmm. What else? Sometimes there's bored. Mm -hmm. I signed up for this. What in the world was I thinking? <laughs> can you repeat the question one more time? What's a circumstance that could come up that would be really tough? For your explorers, people around them are making bad decisions. Uh, drug use, alcohol use, sex. And when people do that, the corollary to that is when they pressure others to do the same. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's take one of these. Which one? Let's look at that list up there. What, what I want to do in the time I have left, I have uh, 15 minutes. And during that 15 minutes, what I want to do is take a few of these and actually model them. Actually practice them. We'll have somebody who's the mentor and somebody who's the explorer that's having to go through these. Which ones would be toughest on you to mentor somebody through? Is it blinding? What were you going to say, Caleb? I would say the ones where, like, the bottom ones, the ones that are more emotionally great, um, I think having at home over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Emotionally hurt. Is there the possibility that they could get emotionally hurt while being in, a, in an Explore Austin event? It might come out. It might come out. It's, it's possible that they could get emotionally hurt there. Is it more likely that they'll be hurt when they show up for the explorer almost anyway? Is yes. that right? Okay. So let's assume that they're emotionally hurt when they show up at the event. How do they behave? How's and someone, you know, could be sort of dejected, not engaging. Just some, like, kids, some kids, it might be someone just Dejected, some kids might act out. Some you know, trying to, you know, they're emotionally hurt at home. So now, when they come to the group, they try to act all aggressive, and bad, aggressive. Yeah, you know? can be tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some kind of violent acting out. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Can 
can you fix them if they're emotionally hurt at home? No. Let's be honest. You can't. You can't do that. That's not what Explore Out Austin is tasking you to do. But can you create an environment for them that allows them to feel safe and at least during that time they can heal while they're there with Explore Austin? And the control. If that's the case, you got somebody who shows up who's solo. How do you determine that they've been emotionally hurt? Which so leadership style do you use to get them to tell you what's going on? I'm first. Affiliative. Affiliative? What would you say? I just try to understand if something's off and try to have that conversation about what's going on. <clears throat> Explain that you see you see a difference in maybe how it was last time. Asking if it was just a short night or if something something else happened. Like really trying to get into his world and, and try to see something as he's seen. So okay. Yeah. Aaron has just showed up for one of your events. Aaron's an explorer, and you're his mentor. And Aaron's being really sullen. Aaron's always introverted. But he's particularly energetically shut down today. Figure out what's going on with there. Turn and face him and figure out what to do. And use the affiliative style. Hey, Aaron, how are you doing today? Good. Yeah, how's, uh, how's your week? Uh, I'm going to get school. Yes. And, uh, see your. Uh, Particularly talkative to do. So, anything going on? I don't know. You have a short night last night? Are you excited about today? Yes. That's the most exciting thing for you. Mm. I'll be riding a bike. Yeah. When's the last time you did that? Last time we were together. Yeah. I hope you didn't forget. You know what they say? Once you learn how to ride a bike, you don't forget. That's pretty good. That's a good, good start. You're, you're, uh, you're happy to be here with everybody else? For the most part. Yeah. You, you, you see these guys at school, right? What's that? You see these guys at school, right? Yeah, sometimes. Who do you, who do you spend most time with? Mm -hmm. With Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> Come try to bed. That's nice. Nice. This one. So, you, is, is Johnny good on a bike too? I don't know. You don't talk about riding bikes. So. Mm -hmm. so, but what do you do? What, what, what brings you closer to Johnny? Okay, so. Did you figure out what was going on? Uh, no. You Did you get an I idea of what to do about Aaron? To help Aaron for this event? Uh, the idea was to kind of just show him that I'm interested in what he's doing and hopefully that as as the day goes on, getting, getting the information I got because he was doing me much, as the day goes on, reintegrate that into it, maybe pulling his friend, like if he's not feeling well, hey John, come, come over and let's, we're going to be having lunch with that right now. With things like that, you have to, you can't just solve it like, like that on the spot. Yeah. So it's just like getting those, that little bit of information and, and throughout the day, like trying to make it as, as appeasing and uh, appealing to him as possible. Yeah, how many times during the day would you check in there? You don't want to be, you don't want to be all over him either. So it's one of those things where if you're riding a bike, um, you, and, and he's in the back, you, you pull next to him, hey, how's it going? And, I'm just showing the country and show, show him that you're there for him. And also like, hey, if you have any, like make it understood that if he has any concerns, any questions, like he, he can lean on me. Fair enough. Eric, based on when you started and when I said stop, do you feel better or worse? Better. Better, why? Talk to somebody. Talk about yourself so even if you don't want to do it. Do you feel cared for? Did the questions that he asked, Give you an idea. Maybe Kevin kind of cares for you. Yeah, I mean, it gets you thinking about something else at least for a little while and yeah. open up a little bit. So he asked some distracting questions to get you away from whatever is off your mind. 
How could he affiliate that style of backfire? Take this situation. Someone showed up, they get emotionally hurt, they're sullen, and you choose to use the affiliate style. How could that go real wrong for you? If it's disingenuous, that would definitely backfire on you. You've got to always be on it. Always be constantly earning their trust. Right, Scott? Mm -hmm. Keep in mind that sullenness, violence, these are trained behaviors. They use these behaviors when they're emotionally hurt because they have protected them in the past. And they get really adept at this behavior. So he never cracked the shell open completely. But that's because just like an explorer would be, you're really rehearsed at that hardened shell. Really practiced, really good at it. Does that make sense here? It doesn't. So it's just missing it at a time. Keep at it. But you have to use the authentic, you have to be very authentic. If you didn't use the affiliative style, what other style would you use? Maybe let's vote in the sense you're giving the explorer a voice of choice and empowering them with potentially them using their words. You seem to be upset today. Are you upset today? A little bit. Uh -huh. Would you rather not be involved with what we're doing? Maybe. Uh -huh. uh, Shall we just, as we go off on this, shall we just leave you here? Maybe just a little bit of space would be nice. Okay. That's a, that's a democratic way. Mm -hmm. What I've done is given her the choice to choose to participate. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, in the end, the odds are likely that she'll choose to participate mm -hmm. because she chose to, to, to show up in the first place, even at a point where she's been emotionally hurt. But she wants to do it on her terms. She wants to have control. Does that make sense? But in this instance, what if she says, no, I don't want to participate. So you're off and I send her home. What if you already, what if you already got on the like you're out of camp or something? Like that. that's, that's something you have to discern before you get on the bus. Mm -hmm. If they're there and, and you find this out, then it's like, this is back to the case of zip lining. That was one of the cases. Somebody gets the zip line and they look at it and they go, oh crap. No, I'm not doing that. Don't make them do that. Don't make them do that. Allow them the freedom that you are just fine sitting and enjoying the rest of the day without doing the zip lining. Something that we learned in the last session was like in the let's vote kind of circumstances, you give choices that you as the mentor are comfortable with saying yes to either way. So it's not like, do you want to go home if you're out in the mountains? That's not really a choice that you can provide and you know follow through with. So instead, you know, would you like to step aside from the group for five minutes, or would you like to join them? So there's still there's you're still empowering them, but uh, you're giving them boundaries in a sense too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really valid point. Is if you're going to give them a vote. Make sure that you accept whatever they choose. <laughs> you know, give them a false vote, again, as being inauthentic, you know, mm -hmm. and that destroys trust. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Okay, what if they're violent? What if they come in and they start acting out and start being hateful or hurtful to other students? Which style do you use? Or authoritative. Authoritative? Mm -hmm. Tell me more. How would you do that? Um, well, first, I'd uh, let them know that uh, that sort of communication uh, towards their is part of our um, contract, mm -hmm. verbal, uh, social. social contract. Uh, we don't hurt others or uh, make fun of others or anything like that. So remind them of that, and then just take them aside and say, and then I maybe change my um, leadership style to maybe democratic to try and calm them down or give them a choice. Um, to see if they'll change their attitude. I apologize, you introduced yourself to me. Sorry, I'm not wearing my name tag, Laura. Laura. Laura, you're an explorer and you just showed up. And 
emotionally you've been hurt. Not only last night, but this morning before showing up for the Explorer Austin event. And you're starting to act out. You're starting to be pretty hateful to other kids. And you've gotten loud. Jared, what do you do? Turn to, no, turn and face each other. Uh, Laura, come with me, please. I'm not coming. Uh, okay, well then, can everybody else please leave and give uh, Laura and me here a few moments? I don't know why you're talking to me like this. That's okay. Um, look, we can either give you some time to calm down or we can uh, send you home, whatever you would like to do. I don't like either of those. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, this, this yeah, is real. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's, that's okay. What would you like to do? I just don't want to talk to anybody right now. Everybody's just really bothering me. Okay. Well, how long would you like to be left alone? Because we're, I am responsible for you, and ultimately we care for you. So, um, I want to make sure this is kind of give you your space as needed, but also uh, how we need to go about our day. Can you give me ten minutes? Yeah. Look at what just happened here. A negotiation mm -hmm. to an agreement that empowered her, that put her back in control. So she got ten minutes. Well, even if it's just 10 minutes, that may not seem like very much to you as a mentor, but now she's got, I've just dealt with a really tough situation, something that I had no control over. And for that one moment, I had a little bit of control. And that's probably all you need, right, Laura? Mm -hmm. He gave you the 10 minutes. Meanwhile, everybody else is off doing things. Now he comes back and says, shall we go? Do you feel taken care of? I do. I feel honored. Okay. Now the problem is, if there are five of you who've got 15 students, 15 explorers, if I remember right, that's the ratio, mm -hmm. five yeah. to 15, and you have five different explorers that are acting out, now you've got a problem. Because <laughs> she wants 10 minutes, and he wants to go biking instead of zip lining, and she wants to, you see what I mean? Now you've got a whole bunch of different parochial agendas. Now what do you do? You break in the teams and try to decide potentially as a unit, a smaller unit? Use the democratic method? Mm -hmm. I think I'd pull everyone together and say, like, explain, like, hey, there are five of us, there are 15 of you, and today is a tough day for the group, and we need your help to help us help you. <laughs> Look at what just happened. You're in charge. You hear what the, the language that you use says you're in charge. I'm putting you in charge. What do we do with the day? It's also being genuine because you're kind of coming down and saying like, hey, you, you're making my life difficult. I get, you didn't directly say that, yeah. but like, you're explaining like, these kids can help me, or y'all can help me as a mentor. Okay. As a sense of genuineness. I'm, I'm out of time, I've just got one last question. That's, what's the most important thing that you have to remember when you're mentoring the explorers? Every single moment, what's the one thing you have to remember? Do you it's not yeah. empathetic. That was all at once. <laughs> <laughs> start with start all. That you care about them. You care about them. What did you say? Empathy? Empathy. There were a couple there. others. You're there for them. I'm there for you. If there's one rock that you can stand on, it's my shoulders. Okay, we're out of time. Thank you all very much.